want us to try to teach briefly about dominion prayers. These are prayers that change your season. Prayers that change seasons. Many times we cry to God while God expects us to execute judgment on our season. Perhaps you are in a wilderness situation. I'll show you what leads you there. Perhaps you are in a situation where you feel like life at a hina man. I'll show you what leads you there. But we need to get to a chance, church of God, where we can stop praying the give me my daily bread prayer and we start praying dominion prayer. Because I say God has given you your daily bread. That's where you are alive today. And we thank God for that. We can never underrate the prayer of Jesus. We still will be asking for daily bread. But that will not cause you to inherit your, your land. That will not cause you to inherit your substance. That will not take you to the places that God has caused you to acquire. Why? Because he told the children of Israel, Aluambia, the land that I'm giving you, it already has inhabitants. Hallelujah. Aluambia nanda kuapatia mji. Womji ukotari na wenyewe. The land has the Jebusites, the Perisites, whoever the site. But he told them, go and get that land. You'll find houses that you never built, live in them. You're going to find boreholes you never dug, drink from them. You're going to find vines that you never planted, eat of them. But we're not going to do it by just going around and saying, Baba, oi, umeana vile ni meteswa. No, so we're going to get now to a level of dominion. There's a dimension of dominion you're operating in prayer, where you acquire what God intended for you, because the contender, the devil, already has decided. Now, Pastor, you have to rise and say, I'm getting there. Can you say, I'm getting there? Can you say, I'm getting there? To my inheritance. I want us to, de to, to discover something. <laughs> from the book of John, chapter 6 and verse 18. I'm going to start from there. I want us to talk about taking charge of the wind. The wind determines the seasons. We are talking of spiritual wind. The wind causes the rain to fall. In case you need rain, we need the wind to bring the clouds. The wind determines spiritual seasons for the people of God. And I want to train you what the Holy Ghost has been training me about getting authority over your spiritual season. It's very long, but today I'll only deal with the wind. Next year we'll go ahead with the rest. Amen. Amen. And next year, but one and but two and but three. I can see Jackie wondering what is happening this year. No, we are still preaching. I want us to go to the book of John. I want us to start from verse uh, 17. Go to 18 and 19. And entered into a ship, and they went over the sea towards Capernaum. And it was now dark, and Jesus had not come to them. Verse 18. Right? And the sea arose by reason of a great wind that blew. How are you going to America? Suddenly. Upepo umeanza kuvuma. Na vile unavyovuma ni kuonyesha ya kwamba hii merikebu hakika itazama kwa maji Bwana Yesu asifiwe. In a sense the wind has begun to blow. And there is no doubt because there is used to have a sail. If the wind is great because the wind determines the sea. One day I'll teach you about the wealth of the sea by the power of the wind. The wind determines the waves of the sea. Now a crazy wind began to flow. And the sea began to, and they knew, Hakika, we are going to sink. Why? There arose up by the sea the reason of great wind that blew. These are people on their journey. This could be you in your spiritual journey. 
far as you are going, suddenly issues arise. Spiritual demonic winds that just bring trouble. There are demonic winds that the devil blows just to cause you unrest and instability. Unasema hakika mimi nilikuwa na msingi mara sahisi juu kumendaje the devil just brought an unstable wind and these are not prayers to pray for this wind apana now I'll show you how to take authority because I'm ministering briefly but by the time I'm done you'll be determining your seasons hallelujah si unasema sasa kumehara kila mtu amehara that's a wind yake sio kuhara hii Hallelujah, ni kuwa bro. Amen. And hiyo kuwaki sawa. Hallelujah. I want us to go to another win. Job chapter 1 and verse 19. When you tell me that you have gone to the wilderness, I want to show you what, what happens to you. Job 1, 19. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness. A wind from where? It is a great wind that has visited your finances, a demonic wind from the wilderness. And if you don't control what blows in your life, you'll be tossed either into the water for trouble or else you'll be tossed into the wilderness. Great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house and it fell upon the young men and they are dead. And I only escaped to tell them. Wind from the wilderness in a letter gift. Are we together? In Isaiah, it's death to your prayer life. Nowadays, you can't pray because you are hit by a wind from the wilderness. In Isaiah, perhaps the thing that has died in your life is favor. Unasama, there is a time I used to operate in favor. Nilikuwa na kibali, nilikuwa na pendeza, squeezy kulienda. Any wind from the wilderness. It could be physical death at the end of the day. Unasama, every month, at this time of the year, there is death in our family. It is a wind from the wilderness that brings death. Have you seen that? So unless you know how to control the wind, anything will be blowing against your path. But today we thank God. We are learning how to control the wind. I want us to go to Jonah 4.8. I'll even spare my Bible so that you can be able to, to move as fast as possible. Hallelujah. Amen. Isa Sanile Wind. Jonah. Nani anajua Jonah is after which book? Lift up your hands. Jonah is after which book? Now you have checked. Yeah, if somebody. No, that's too late. If you lifted your hand immediately, I would have given you a thousand. All right, let's go. And it came to pass when the sun did arise. That God prepared a vehement, who? Vehement. Lois, can you read that one? You can't. A vehement east wind, and the sun beat upon the head of Jonah, and he was faint, and he wished in himself to die. And he said, It is better for me to die than to live. We shall have to figure out what is going on in the world, and we figure out. Umeskuwa na upepo until Jonah reached a point he was so heat that now he decided afadhali sasa nikufe. This was Jonah, a man of God, beaten by a wind that caused him to go nuts. And then God told him, oh, now you want to die. If you continue in the other verses, I'm not going to preach about Jonah. He's one of my favorite canonical prophets. Why? Because Jonah is like you and like me. He's just real. You told me to go and preach and the people didn't die. What happened? I Thank God we are not killing anybody who want people to live to be a testimony to the Lord. Amen. Amen. But now I'm telling you about Jonah. Are there moments when life is so hot? Spiritually you faint. It has fainted. Unaangalia maisha yako ya every area it is faint that was the wind of the devil that caused that, that was the wind that God allowed to blow on Jonah why because he had complained murmuring and complaining always brings a wind tuko pamoja 
Jonah had murmured. And God brought a wind. He tried the tree while he alikuwa na keti. Kaambia Mungu, "Not even the tree you have eaten, eh? The tree." And God told him, "I brought the tree. I can finish the tree." And when he finished it, he was beaten by a wind. When you mama and complain against your cover, the wind beats you. Let us get to the next one. That's not my sermon for today. Matthew 14 and verse 24. Matthew, Matthew. Yeah, Matthew, Matthew, Cindy. Matthew, Matthew, hallelujah. Let us start from verse 23. Then we are going to take some moments. We will pray and command our seasons. Amen. I told you, Church of the Shelter, you'll be moving in billions. Tunanza kujanga kanisa. Munafikiri ya pesa zina toka kwenu. Because you are going to command seasons. Unasema sasa ni season yangu ya millions. Unasema lori pale ni memoga lori ishirini za mawe. Na zile trigger mnaona za mchanga zote ni mimi nisha lipia. Wengine anasema tunajenga kanisa ya ukuta ya kio. Mi vio zote nisha lipia zinakuja mnataka kalakani. That's why you've got to get dominion. Amen. Financial dominion. Amen. So, umeomba, umefunza, umetoka kwa maombi, you don't know what to do next. The devil just brings another wind. You're wondering what today we are taking charge. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up to a mountain about to pray. And when the evening was come, uh, he was there alone. Continue. Matthew chapter 14. Is that where we were? Continue scrolling. <laughs> but the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. This is a scripture I wanted. There was a ship. Hakika, the wind is supposed to push it so that it can go to your destination. Lakini shatani analeta ile ina ito a contrary wind. Hiyo ndio inakufanya umakitai. Tuko pamoja? Haya, haya, haya. Let me get somebody to watch out a contra. Just come my sister. Though I discovered you are very strong. So, uh, let me have a sister in case. Yes. Sasa, though I discovered she's strong. Some people wanna eat. Ile siku ni limskuma. Ali limskuma. Nubia ni mifuana kaya strong. All right. Now, this is what is happening. Assume she's walking this way. And the wind of God is blowing her way. The wind of God is blowing her there because that is where her breakthrough is. And every step, anaona mkono wa mungu. Tuko pamoja. Every step, unaona mkono wa mungu. Why? Because life is precept upon precept, line upon line. Here are little, there are little. That's what the Bible says. And the Bible says it is from glory to glory. Sasa amekuwa na testimony, ametoka from one glory to another glory, then the devil, I'm not the devil, but let me, because if I tell her to act like God, she'll be very depressed. Now, she's coming towards her direction. Kuja, contrary means opposite. Then a contrary wind begins to blow. Sasa anafanya nini mark timing? Hiyo ni kwali ya masio kweli? Because there is a contrary wind pushing her. By the way, I'm strong. There is a contrary wind pushing her where? Pushing her back. Now, know what I'm saying? This is what the devil does when he brings a contrary wind. Unanza kumak time, you labor very hard and you bring in little. Do you get what I'm saying? She's laboring. Paginaki, just try and come this way. When she labors, she can make a small step. And if she stops to labor, the wind begins to push her back. That is what you call a contrary Wind. You have already planned. Thank you so much, my dear. And you'll not labor. Just come. Eh, just come. Eh, pitia kabisa with your wind. And I'll zumbuke hapo. You get to your destiny. There'll be nothing to contradict you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Mara mingi unajipata umejaribu. Lakini unafika kiwango ni kama kukona milango na blocks. Tuko pamoja. Karibu kuwe na breakthrough, but something happens. You're just about to break through. But a contrary 
weighed by the devil is what sweeps you back. Hallelujah. A what? A contrary wind. A wind that says you will not move this direction. Why? Because if you move that direction, you're going to have a testimony. And the devil knows you'll punish the devil. Because when Gina Wenu, the minute you get financial ability, Pakona to Talipia school fees. True or not? Pakona to Ambota's idea wa kule. True or not? There are families that will live from your hand. So the devil knows my issue is not even you now. It is the people who are tagging along with your breakthrough. Because I want to punish them with frustration. What will I do? I will send a contrary wind. Everything is in order. When you are about to break through a contrary wind, it blows away your favor. It blows away your contract. It blows away and it keeps blowing. But today we are taking dominion. Amen. I want us to go to Matthew chapter 4. As I finish, I told you today I'm preaching for 15 minutes and I'm almost done with my 15 minutes. It will be 18. 20. Mark chapter 4. This is what you do to the wind. By the grace of God, we'll be learning about the wind. But after now, he has already ministered now for the next three weeks. Oh. And I'll take you to every element. And you'll see how we'll take your video. Hallelujah. Mark, Mark chapter 4. <laughs> And verse 37. Lois, ma, ne ma, go. Dear sister, we understand her situation. Amen. We understand your situation. Amen. Glory. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves bit. Let us start from that verse 36 in Jackson. I think sorry, come on. Hallelujah. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. This is when you have a fellowship with Jesus. Church of God, you only command wins when you have a fellowship with Jesus. Do you know what fellowship means? Fellows in the same ship. That's the origin, the root of the word fellowship. He's laughing now. Laugh. Let me teach you English. Get a paper and a pen. Fellowship. Root word is fellows. The other root word is sheep, meaning fellows in the same sheep. That is what we call a fellow sheep. Now these ones were fellows in the same sheep with Jesus. So you need to have a fellow sheep with Jesus. Akuwe kwa hii merikebu. Yesu akiwa kwa hii merikebu, wacha tuwana viga inatendeka. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the sheep. And they, and, and they were as also with him, also other little ships. My friend, Jesus used to, try to, to go with an entourage. He was in a ship, and he was with that, them also other little ships. Have you seen the Bible? Yeah, so when people are complaining, pastors are going to carry kubo, mpaka wakua ata an entourage. We are heading there. Nyinyi mnakuja na zenu. Na wengine na zenu siyo ndoko pia zitakuwa kubwa Tunaenda kubiri injiri Amen. Amen This was Jesus with his entourage He was in a ship, his was a Bentley And the others were in Let me not mention because of the YouTube The others were in other ships Which were still good cars Amen And when he had sent the multitude they took him Even as we were in the ship And there were also others with him In little ships To endele his entourage were rich. Man, you can't be around Jesus and remain poor. Can he say, yes, we live poor near our doors? You get into yours, I get into my cruise boat. Hallelujah. Get into your ship, who mungina na sema, my cruise is around. So here they go, because the sea could tell Jesus is in the hood. Man, affluence and wealth. We have not yet seen it, but you are seeing it now. Why? Let's see why he had that. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. You see again, it is a great wind. These people are going around their business. Wamekuwa kiundumu. Suddenly, a great wind. Upepo unanza kuvuma. Na si upepo wa kawaida, upepo mkuu, unanza kuvuma. 
And now the sheep begins to toss. And the Bible says, verse 38, and he was in the hinder part of the sheep. Now, this was the design of his sheep. He turned upstairs and upstairs. He was in downstairs. So I told you it was not a cruise ship. It, it was not a boat. It was a ship. Jesus was loaded. So you've got to be loaded. Say my amen. amen. Alikuwa na meli ikona upstairs, second floor. Eh, the Bible says he was in the hinder part. He was the other floor. That is Queen, 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 Queen's English. Okay, Steve. Queen Victoria's English. Hinder means the other lower floor. Okay. Thank you. Asleep on a pillow. And you see that sheep. Sio zile tunakalia kisumu na wongo hapa ikigonga hivi na wongo wa huku. Because asleep on a pillow. Rest. Hallelujah. When you learn to command seasons, you enter rest. And they awoke him and said unto him, Master, carest thou not that you perish? Because it was about to capsize. He's not asleep on a rock, but on a pillow. When you learn what a money on a car, he ain't a pillow. Ah, to say we are happy now, Kalia, happy now, Joto, Kalia, happy. When you learn pillow, you are happy because Abu is machuma. Go to get the game that you are never say, but you are delayed. And he arose and rebuked the. Sh- do you see what you do when the wind arises? Any contrary wind, any wind of the wilderness, any wind of death, Jesus had the knowledge that he was not going to pray against the wind. He had already dominion. Have you been given dominion? Have you been given authority? He said all authority and dominion is yours. Nani kwa nini tukiona hizi vitu tunaanza wimbo? Shetani nitakusema kwa baba nitakusema. What are you saying? Na anasema wewe endelea tu nakulisema. By the time you are done nakulisema, you'll be upside down. Tunaanza shetani nitalafu nalia. Unajua sasa hii ni breakthrough baba. Nitakusema. You are just crying because of your problems. Now we are going to stop crying. We'll do like Jesus. The Bible says, and he arose. He arose. Today we are going to arise. We are going to Umekua kwa roho ya usingizi ya kiroho. Today arise. You don't pray and fast. Today arise. You don't hunger for the word of God. Today arise. Be in fellowship with Jesus. All the others who are struggling, they didn't have Jesus. But when Jesus came, dominion stepped in. And said unto the sea, Peace, be still. When he said to the sea, what happened to the wind? The wind ceased. No, no. And there was a great calm. One moment they are dying. The other moment, only one command. And there was great calm. Kumanisha wiku pepo ule uliko umetumo wa kifo, ulisema na turu, turu di. And the wind stood for to make sure that no wind passed by. Somebody took dominion. Do you want to take dominion over your life today? Do you want to stop a wilderness wind? I wish you could remember them. Let me just put them there. Because I don't know. They, uh, 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 uh. Now, final one. There is another good wind after we have commanded that one. Numbers 1131. Numbers 1131. Numbers 11 and 31. Glory to God. We see what now after every demonic wind has gone down. This is what happens. And the wind forth a wind from the Lord. God has his wind. The devil's winds are contrary winds. Today I'm going to command the wind of God. Amen. And the wind forth a wind from the Lord. And brought forth quails from the sea. And let them fall by the camp. As it were a day's journey on this side. And it were a day's journey on the other side. Round about the camp. And as it were two cubits high upon the face of the earth. 
This is the time the children of Israel wanted to eat chicken. They wanted to eat meat. God from his bread brought two cubits of there has been quail business. Jesus God started it before. He gave them quails to eat. Two cubic feet. What I let you you just eat a piece of chicken, you're even struggling to eat the bone. Because you are umegana kakuku mkiwa family mzima. When God brings provision, it is an overflow provision. Amen. I let a two cubic feet. Now you carry as many as you can. Two feet ni someone, isn't it? Uh, so it was about two feet. All of it of fresh coin. Hallelujah. Amen. What are you believing God for? When you command the seas, God has two cubic feet of what you are believing God for. And now, Ephesians 3.20, He can do more than you can hope, pray, or even dare to imagine. There is an overflow. I don't know whether in your life there's been the wind of wilderness, wind that causes people to faint, wind of death and destruction. No way, no way.